Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'll go through a little bit about my development workflow using Cloud Code and an abstraction on top of Cloud Code that I built called uh, Dylan. So the idea is that I have this uh, CLI runners for uh, the different CLI tools uh, built by Cloud Code, but I'm also uh, experimenting with uh, Codex CLI and Ader here. So using different agentic coders to kick off uh, automation workflows in my code base. Uh, what you can see in the background here is me preparing a prompt for uh, Cloud Code to kick off a development workflow to implement an uh, entire feature into this CLI um, I'm building. So uh, on the left there, you can see that I have these different uh, implementations already of Dylan. I have a review flow for code reviews. I have a PR flows for pull requests, and I have a release flow for uh, autonomous release process. Uh, and this that I'm implementing here right, right now is the developer process. So the idea is that it takes the review from the reviewer and it uh, kicks off fixing the issues mentioned by the reviewer. And you can configure it in different ways so that you can only fix a certain issue type or uh, specific issues by their ID. Next here, you can see uh, that I'm getting done uh, with the prompt. You can see that it's quite long, 423 uh, lines of prompt. Uh, you can find a bunch of different automations as well throughout this code base, but uh, at the moment I'm focusing on this uh, run here. Uh, I have something called a PRP. That's my prompt, a product requirement prompt. Uh, I'll share the, this concept with you as well in the description. Uh, but here you can see that I take basically this prompt that I just wrote. Uh, I write it as a slash command. I inject it into uh, Cloud Code through the arguments. Uh, and I implement it uh, in one shot here is the idea. So, or zero shot, depending who you're asking. But yeah, basically just kicking it off here, ingest all the information of the PRP and uh, any reference document mentioned in the PRP and execute, right? That's pretty simple. You can get pretty meta on these slash commands here and, and explain quite a lot what it is that you want to do. Uh, but for this demonstration purpose here, I'm keeping it simple. Uh, I'll at some point, I'll share some of my more advanced slash commands here uh, that I use actually to automate large parts of my code base workflows. Uh, any really repetitive task that I have, I have a slash command for. So here you can see some uh, of the examples that I have in this code base. Cloud code also has a lot of built-in slash commands, not for automations per se, but uh, uh, take some time, explore what you have available to you if you're, if you're using this tool. It's, it, quite a lot of it comes out of the box and it's very customizable with these uh, different um, workflows. So Cloud is uh, just about ready here, uh, running off some final validations on this uh, test run. Uh, basically, it's uh, running through the validation gates that we gave it in the PRP. So it's just checking that all of the CLI commands is uh, working and that all of the imports are correct and, and so on. So uh, once it's done here, let's uh, check it out. But so now it's actually done here, and we can see that it uh, sends us a little report. Uh, and we just uh, add everything, commit it, and uh, you can see an automatic commit message here. It's another automation I have in this code base where it automatically creates a commit message whenever I commit. Uh, but yeah, we can look into that later. Uh, when I boot it up, I have Dylan Review. I can boot it up in uh, headless mode or interactive mode using the interactive flag. Uh, here I'm using interactive just so that we can see what is going on in the background. Uh, but you can also boot it in, in uh, headless mode by just running Dylan Review. It takes uh, your prompt, breaks it down into different to-do um, steps and starts executing. Uh, what it does is it takes your feature branch and it compares it to develop or whichever branch you have configured as your uh, base branch. So you can uh, configure this and the cloud will uh, or Dylan will automatically figure out which one is your base branch. Uh, so yeah, you can see it's running. It has broken down the tasks really neatly here for us and it's uh, already halfway through uh, the review process. Uh, and uh, yeah, so while it's uh, chugging on here in the background, I'll just show you how I built this interactive flag 
uh, I actually used the new uh, jewels from Google uh, to you know test this out and see uh, if it could build this new feature. Uh, I wrote the pretty basic prompt as you can see there. Uh, I referred uh, it to documents or files that I had in my project. Uh, I actually have a file there uh, where I already built a prototype of this interactive flag into a runner script uh, in the POC part of the project. So I just referenced that and I asked it to implement it into, uh, into the um, uh, CLI tool and across all of the CLI tools. So it uh, created a unified interactive flag for all of our uh, runners and uh, yeah, uh, did a really good job. Uh, I just checked out that branch, actually ran a Dylan review on it, made a, a couple of small fixes and uh, made a PR in about uh, two minutes uh, or actually released a PR in about two minutes. So yeah, a really powerful tool. Highly recommend you check it out. Uh, at the moment, it's on a really high load. So I, you see I have a bunch of tasks on the left there waiting to run. Uh, but yeah, they're not being run because it's uh, yeah just very overloaded at the moment. Uh, but yeah, check it out. It's cool. Uh, you can see here that we get some metadata from the report. Uh, issues it found. It found a couple of uh, medium and high issues. It's mainly related to documentation and test coverage. So it's not that severe, but it's still some issues that we might want to uh, look into fixing. So let's uh, kick off here a uh, dev run. And we will reference the review file and we will uh, specify the issues that we wanted to fix and we run it in interactive mode. So uh, you can see there as well that I used those bunny ears on the issues that I specified that I wanted to fix. So while it runs here, it actually just fixes the one issue and it skips um, the other two. Uh, but it's just because I used those bunny ears, I rerun this later and uh, just not specifying with the bunny ears there, it will it will work as expected. Uh, but yeah, uh, what you can do also in the interactive mode is that you can just uh, continue the conversation. Uh, if something like that happens to you, you can just continue talking to Claude and, and specify which issues you wanted to fix, and it can com come back and fix those for you. As I'm demonstrating here, you can see the, uh, what you would do if you wanted to continue that interactive mode. But yeah, uh, we don't really want to do that here. So I'll just remove the, uh, that line and let's kick off here <coughs> Cloud Code again. So this time we want to kick it off uh, with uh, another flag. So let's uh, try the severity flag this time. Uh, we will kick it off on the medium severity level since the two tasks that we have left that that club didn't fix on the first dev run uh, are both medium. So let's just kick it off fixing those two uh, medium issues. And uh, yeah, uh, when I kick it off here as well, you can see that there is a bunch of uh, pretty neat uh, metadata in the top there uh, where you can see which branch is running on. Uh, what security, uh, which is what issues we have, uh, what severity we're running on, and yeah, a bunch of useful information you can get in the top there. Uh, this is something that I will build out as well to, to get better and more useful over time. And and yeah, so yeah, let's see when it's done here. We can see that it's actually uh, printed out the report for us here already. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, it has appended the report. So you can see here that uh, all three issues are now fixed. Uh, it gave us some descriptions about what it fixed, how it fixed it, and so on. And yeah, it's really just giving us a, a rundown of, of what it's done. Uh, let's exit out here out of this and uh, run a PyTest to see that it we have passing tests. Seems like it's all working. Uh, we don't have too much test coverage in this project, but uh, it's still good to run it. Uh, now let's uh, kick off the next workflow. So in order to do that, we need to uh, add and commit everything and uh, we will actually kick off now the PR workflow uh, on top of this uh, dev run here. Uh, so yeah, let's kick off the PR as well in interactive mode. Yeah, so that we can get the same visibility. You see the same type of metadata here. And uh, yeah, uh, it runs. Uh, what it does is it takes your branch, compares it to develop, and it creates a PR for you in uh, GitHub. So 
Let's wait until it's done and uh, I'll see you soon. So it's already done here. And as you can see, it, it creates a pretty detailed PR for you. So yeah, much more detailed than what I could have been bothered to add myself. So yeah, it uh, lists the changes, the commits, which files you changed, modified, uh, added, updated, so on. Uh, it also gives you uh, a change log suggestions. So it doesn't append to your change log, but it gives a pretty neat um, section there on uh, change log suggestions. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, check it out. This one is uh, one of the ones I use the most. So this is really, really useful for me. But now let's kick off the last workflow. So the last workflow is an autonomous release agent. So basically you can specify your uh, rules uh, before you run this. But the way I run it is that I just give it full autonomy. Uh, it doesn't really do any destructive actions. It just takes your uh, develop branch and merges it into main. And it then also depends to the change log and uh, bumps the version in your TOML file. So whichever it, it looks for your TOML file. So if you run a, a Rust project with the cargo or package.json, uh, whichever one you have, it uh, will find it and bump your version uh, before it releases. It will also depend on your change log, uh, put any anything you had in the unreleased, manually added or added by your workflows will be appended and uh, it will also look through your PRs if you have any suggestions for change logs uh, that it would add. So yeah, really useful little workflow that uh, just releases your product. So uh, in Unisense, you can run all of these, right? So, so the idea here is that I will build a loop system that will review, develop, PR, release, like in one go. Uh, there will be some validation gates inside of that flow as well. So I have been running this workflow actually for a couple of months already in, in my other projects, but this is here uh, my attempt to generalize it so that it can work on any code base. Uh, the ones that I have are very specific for my, for my code bases. And I do recommend that if you use this when you uh, download this uh, repo. When you clone this repo, you can uh, adapt the prompts, uh, or you can at least inject project-specific um, uh, things from your projects into this prompt, and it will help you, uh, and it will increase your accuracy uh, on these runs. But yeah, I hope this uh, is interesting to you, uh, and uh, I hope you try it out. It's uh, been really, really useful for me. As I said, like especially when I build these side projects, I run these workflows like all the time. So while I do my other work, these just run in the background, uh, doing complete PRPs, doing reviews for those PRPs, uh, doing a PR when I'm ready to do a PR, and and doing a release when I'm ready to do a release. So I really don't have to think about anything of those, uh, let's say, repetitive tasks, like especially like the code review stuff and. Uh, and uh, uh, PR and release stuff like that is very, very autonomous for me. And one of the major things there really is that when I do the, uh, when I do the review, uh, I always go in there and check the review report so that it doesn't uh, do some kind of fix that uh, I don't want it to do. So that's the kind of the only thing there. That's why I added all of those uh, pick, like cherry picking options in the, in the dev um run so that you can cherry pick your fixes and, and cherry picks your severity fixes and so on uh, so yeah that's uh, really cool and uh, thanks for listening i know this was a rambling video uh, my first video so many more to come uh, i'll improve the the cutting and the editing over time as well so yeah bear with me uh, see you soon